Okay, so we are going to paint a mandala today on stone using the nail dotting tools, which I have here, various sized ends. I'm also going to be using Deco Art Crafters Acrylic Paint, which is water-based acrylics. It just helps your dots spread a little bit easier using the water-based acrylics instead of the acrylics that you get out of like the metal tubes. Um, and then you have to thin that kind of paint, which is a process. These I just find easier to use because it's already set and fluid enough to use for dotting. There are many different ways that you can find the center of a stone. Um, Personally, I just eyeball it and go from there, but a lot of people measure and you can use whatever kind of tool, measuring tool you need um, to find the center. Some people cut out stencils the size of their stone to find the center, um, but like I said, I just eyeball it, so that's where I'm going to start. I personally find it helpful too to make a little mark once I find the center. This I painted black already, this stone, um, so I can just make a mark with my finger or I can take one of the other dotting tools that I have and kind of eyeball, do like an X marks the spot type. And that looks about the center for where I want. Now on this mandala, I'm going to start off with a nice large center, so I'm going to use the largest dotting tool I have and get a big glob of paint on there. And then I just kind of spread it around like this. I see a lot of people using punch sets or crocheted, any type of thing with a flat bottom um, you could probably use. But this seems to work pretty good, so you can just draw a circle with it. Okay, and for this one I'm just going to do a traditional start to the mandala where you make sort of a plus sign cross with six dots around your first center. So I usually just share from the middle because I don't like to waste paint. <laughs> so one above, one below, and I make the plus sign, and then I just do dots in between each of the dots that I just made with the plus sign. Just find the middle of those dots. Okay, so we have the start to our mandala. And symmetry is something that gets formed from the center out. So as long as your center dot is in the middle and you keep things evenly spaced for the most part, the symmetry in your mandala will come out gorgeous. So I think for the fact that New Year's is coming up and everything is shiny and happy, I'm going to go with some metallics for today. And the first one I'm going to use is Silver Morning. Okay, so the Silver Morning. And then we're just going to go in between the dots we just made. And you can see how it's starting to form. Okay, for the next metallic that I'm going to use, it's called pur Purple Pearl. It's kind of a tongue twister. And that is the Deco Art Still Metallics. And I'm going to go the next size up with the dotting tool. It's a little bit bigger. And we will fill in between the silvers. 
Just for the sake of full disclosure as well, I'm pausing in between here to let the dots dry as I do rounds. Um, I find it easier if they're a little bit drier than they don't run together. So that's just my own personal way to do this. Uh, some people are very adept at tucking their dots in and not having them run together, but I'm not so lucky, <laughs> um, especially since I'm newer to using the dotting tools. Um, Ordinarily, I use brushes, but I found a lot of great tools and the paints work really well. So we're going from here on out trying it with the tools. I'm really enjoying it. And I hope you are too. So now we're going to do our purple pearls in between our silvers. shaping up nicely. Okay, why don't we do another round of silver on this little guy. I'm just going to choose a larger um, dotting tool to do the next ones. And we will tuck them in between our purples that we just created on the mandala. So, this silver is a little more fluid than I want it to be, but it's staying where it should. Sometimes it's hit or miss depending on where you get the paints from or the temperature in your home. This is going to be nice and shiny for New Year's. Our next round of silver. Okay, I think that round has dried enough. And the next color that I'm going to use is a berry metallic. Nice and shiny. And that's going to be a bit bigger dot towards the outside of the silvers we just put down and above the purple. I'm going to go even larger on my dotting tools. And get a good amount of paint on here. Some of these metallics get a little gooey um, and they start to form like a skin, <laughs> like pudding almost. Um, so I don't pour the paint until right before I'm ready to use it and that way it doesn't get a skin um, or start to thicken too much in the palette. But that's just a little tip. So there we go. This is a great color. The berry. And I think I might have had a little bit too much coffee today. So... I am actually holding it with two hands today. I don't know if you can see that on my camera right now. But not that it matters. But just if you were wondering why I'm so shaky. I tend to drink a lot of coffee. With three kids, you got to keep life going, right? There we go. So I'm going to let that dry a little bit and we'll be back. Okay, so now I'm going to do a round of little dots around our berry that we just did. And ordinarily I use my paintbrush that I have here. It's called a angle spot detailer. <laughs> um, ordinarily I use that, but since I'm using the tools for this video, 
I actually have a dotting tool where I broke the end off of it and then it makes a little sharper point and allows me to do much smaller dots. Um, I know some people use the end of toothpicks or push pins, um, whatever you like to go with and works for you, then you should use. But I found it comfortable because I can hold on to this like a pen still or a paintbrush and it makes it a lot easier for me. Okay, so let's pick out a color to do around the berry. I have this great new bright red. I was not able to find one in the Deco Art Metallics, so I actually got it from Folk Art, which is made by Plaid. Um, it's their bright red metallic, and it is still acrylic paint. And I'm going to use that for the dots around the berry, the first round. And the consistency of this paint is a little stickier than I'm used to working with, so I just want to make sure that you pick your tool up all the way so you don't drag the dots into one another when you're working so closely together. They're coming out nicely. We're halfway through here, and I can't work side to side on the stones. I need the point that I'm working on usually right in front of me, so I apologize if it's disconcerting that I keep turning the stone, but I like to have it right in front of me where I'm working. Plus, I don't know about you all, but as I get older, my eyesight's not what it used to be. <laughs> so I kind of need it as close as possible some days so that I can see what I'm doing. Well, in the classes I teach, a lot of people feel nervous about doing the smaller dots. Um, just, you get used to holding the tool, and you'll get used to just tucking them in next to one another, and you don't have to do it super fast. Some people who have been doing it for years, I see fly around really quick, or maybe their videos are spread up, sped up, excuse me. <laughs> um... But yeah, do it at your own pace. This is meant to be enjoyable and calming. I find it really relaxing when I have time away from the kids to just spend a little bit of time to myself doing what I enjoy. There. I think it's coming out all right. So we're going to take a minute to let those dry now, and I'll be back. All right. So I think I am going to use silver for this next round, um, which probably will push us towards the edge enough that um, will be my last round of dots here on the stone. Um, I'm going to go with one of the bigger sized ones because I'm going to start out a little farther here. And just kind of tuck it in there.
And I have a lot on this one, so I'm going to actually spread it over two dots here. That way I don't try to force that one dot. And make a mess of the stone. Which I do, often. But that's the beauty of stones being your canvas. They're, they're free for most of us. Just go to the beach and pick them up or from rivers or you can also pick them up at landscaping places. Home Depot I hear has a lot of nice rocks that you can buy. I've seen them even in the dollar store but those ones look like they have some sort of clear coat polish on them so you might have to put a primer over that and then sand it down a little bit. Let's do one more little guy over here. Okay. Now, someone has asked me to show on this one how to, they put it, drag out the dots um, to make sort of, I call it a drag too, but <laughs> I haven't thought about it as dragging out a dot, but I guess that does make sense. Um, so I'm going to show you how to drag out a dot in just a second. Okay, so I don't want to waste my paints that I've been using today because I did pour a little too much in my wells on my palette. Um, but I'm going to start off, I think, with the purple and show you how to drag out the dot. And it makes kind of like a an apostrophe or I'm not really sure what else you could call it. There might be a formal art term for that, but I was not trained at a formal art school, so I'm not sure what it's called. Maybe somebody can enlighten me on that. And I'm going to use a smaller one because I want to do more than one of these drags. So I get a good amount of paint on one of the smaller dotting tools. And I'm just going to start at the top of this dot, get a good glob going, and then drag it down and lift off gently. And you can see it makes a drag mark. They're actually really pretty. And it's something to add different you know, flares and flourishes to your stones. So I'm going to do that all the way around with the purple and we'll see how it goes. Get a good amount on there, start at the top of my dot and drag it down until the paint runs out. That one ran out a little early on me. So I'm just going to redo it a little bit. Okay. Then they just add a little bit of flourish, flourish, <laughs> to your mandala. Um, sometimes, I don't know about y'all, but I have a hard time getting to the end. What do I want to do on the end design? And... How do you want to make it finish off, you know, to complete your piece? Um, I've been kind of addicted to these lately, so they've been in a lot of the pieces I've done. Um, but they're fun. They're fun little pops of color, different shape. And I think they can add a whole different dimension to what your little piece looks like. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna grab an, the next one. Probably I will do is the maybe silver. We'll tuck some silver in there, and then the pink. I just have to grab a little more silver here. And then I'm just going to go right next to the ones that I already made and just kind of keep the pattern going around the stone. So you can do as many as you can tuck in there or as few as you want to do. You can make them longer, shorter, just whatever your heart desires or your imagination wants to go to for that. And every time you make a different decision, obviously you're going to get a different design. So there's hundreds of thousands of different types of mandala designs. And they're super fun. Okay. 
And this guy's going to be nice and shiny for New Year's. There we go. And then one more here. Cool. All right. And then for the last thing, I'm just, just well, maybe we could fit two more. But I think I'm going to do the pink, and then if we can, we'll tuck the berry in too. We'll see how it goes here. Sometimes I have a plan, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I pick out all my colors and plan exactly how I'm going to do it, and it doesn't go at all according to plan. Sometimes I get halfway into a stone and realize it's too small for what I wanted to do, or too large, <laughs> and I need more. Um... Sometimes I have a hard time thinking of color combinations. Um, so sometimes I will take pictures that I have of old stones that I have done and run it through my filter on my camera. You can do it on your phone. Usually they have an app on it where you just change the hue setting and it will give you different color combinations of the picture you just took. So say I took a picture of this stone and then changed the hue setting. Maybe the hue would turn all the dark purple ones different shades of green and the silver might turn yellow. I'm not sure what it actually does. I'm sure there's a rhyme and reason to the opposite of which colors on the spectrum, how it works, but you know, it just gives you a little more diversity in what you're choosing for your colors. And I find that really helpful, especially when I get stuck. Like, What am I going to do? You can see all these ones are coming along nicely. You just kind of keep doing the same thing, the same pattern. It's really relaxing over and over. And you don't have to do your stone all in one setting either. You know, take some time away from it. Sometimes if you've been up and close for so long with your stone, um, you might start to go dizzy. <laughs> and you might start to feel like you've been up close so it doesn't look exactly maybe how you want it. Sometimes I walk away and come back and I'm like, wow, that looks great. And I had been frustrated with it maybe before. But no, this little guy's coming along nicely. Um, I think I will probably tuck in one more of these little drags with the berry color and then I will say he is done. He, she, my stone. <laughs> and I'm still using the smaller dotting tool. Um, to get these size drags. It's just kind of like an extra projection of color off the end of the mandala here. There we go. All set. And you can see it's not perfect. You're up close and personal with me on this one. And, you know, some are closer than others. Some are longer than others. The stone is not perfectly round. But I think it came out pretty good. A nice little shiny stone for the new year. I hope you enjoyed making this mandala with me. Please feel free to ask any questions. I try to answer them as soon as I can. I think that we should share art and share tips and just be kind to one another and help each other out. Not everybody knows every technique and, you know, it's good to ask questions. So, like I said, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please feel free to click like and share it with others. And I hope to see you again soon. I'm hoping this year we'll make a bunch more videos. Um, just to kind of get it out there, helping people to create awesome little pieces. All right, have a great day, and a happy new year.
Okay, so I forgot to add, if you have any ideas for future stones that you want me to try and paint and do in a video, please feel free to let me know in the comments and we will see what we can do. All right, have a great day. Bye.